uh, for everyone. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about just beyond posting on Facebook. Everybody understands, most people have a, a general idea of Facebook in terms of, okay, I use Facebook on my own. I use it to connect with my friends or to keep up to things. I may even have a business page. And, and usually when we go around the room in our seminars, when we have live seminars, usually 80 to 90% of the people have a business Facebook page uh, or a business or a personal Facebook page. So they're familiar with how to post. They're familiar with uploading photos. But really, we want to get into going beyond just posting into how does this really help my business? Because a lot of businesses, the, the, their biggest challenge that we see when we talk to business owners is how do I get this Facebook thing to really work for me? So, so that's really what we're going we're gonna to talk about today. You know, and, and really, how do we make it effective so that it's more than just, well, we're there because we have to be. You know, so many times we see, we see businesses that say, well, yeah, we have a Facebook page because our web guy told us we had to have one, and you know, we really don't do much on it. So we're going to address that issue today. We're going to talk about a few other things, but, but you know, really getting into how do you use it as a sales tool and not just something that you feel like you're, you're stuck having to do. Okay, so and, and in talking to most clients that we speak with on a regular basis and, and doing some industry statistics, we found out something really interesting, and that is that of the, of the business pages currently on Facebook, less than 40% of them are really set up correctly. They're really not set up for business development. They're not set up to reach a core demographic. They sort of threw a Facebook page together, a picture of the building up, or maybe put their logo in there. But the page isn't really set up to connect back to their website or to communicate well with their clients or to reach out to their demographic. So we're going to talk about today, how do you get in there and really make it so that your, your page is authoritative, mm -hmm. that your page has some great information on it, and that you're getting people to come back and, and communicate with you. So, because, because having a Facebook page for the sake of having a Facebook page, let's be honest folks, that's not really going to give you any great return on your investment. What you really want to know is, you know, am I using this effectively? Am I catching the right people? So when we look at Facebook, you know, we're going to show you today on, on how to grow your business with Facebook by posting the right content, learning about and engaging your core demographic, okay? We're going to talk about promoting on various levels with Facebook in terms of you know, how do we do different uh, – how do we promote a post? How do we put an ad on Facebook? How do we do a contest on Facebook? So there's all of these different things that you could do now that you couldn't do before. And, and people are trying to think, okay, what, what, what's going to work for me? So we're going to talk a little bit about that today as well. And then we're going to talk about also – you know. I, I think probably one of the biggest questions we ask is, Dan, what's the ROI on Facebook? How do I know that this is working? How do I track things on Facebook? Well, we're going to show you exactly how to do that today. And then you know, clearly you're not doing it just for the sake of doing it. Most people want to be the leader in their field. They want to be that person that people trust and go to for their particular goods or services. So, so that's you know we want to, we want to talk about how do you become that leader, okay? Unfortunately, there are some kind of tough parts about it, that, you know, and and one of the things that we struggle with with our clients is there's you know, we we see it day in and day out. Pages aren't set up properly. They have the wrong content on the page. They're really not sure sort of what content to post, in fact. And as far as their core demographic goes, they're going after the wrong target audience, or they don't really know a lot about their core target audience, right? So we also want to look at, um, as I mentioned in, in the previous slide, 
they they don't really have any way of looking at the ROI. They have no way of saying, okay, we've been on Facebook now for a year. We've been on Facebook for six months, and you know, I really don't even know how to look at the analytics. And they've changed so many times. You know, I don't I don't know what I'm looking at or how to get to the information I need. I don't know if this is working for me or not. Okay, and and that's a lot of businesses. They don't have those metrics set up, or they're not looking at the metrics enough to to really know if what they're doing is effective. And then lastly, one of the biggest factors we see is, is most companies don't have the time to do it right. They don't have the time to, to get in there and, and really spend the time that it takes to set up the page properly and put up the right content. So the question then becomes, how well do you feel like you're doing on Facebook? Right? So, when we look at this, we say, okay, what should you want from Facebook? Right? What should you want out of a Facebook campaign? As a business owner, you know, why, why would you even want that? Why would you want that extra headache of one more thing to do? Right? So we, we, we ask the question of, of what should you want? Well, the main thing is you really should become a leader in your industry and, and have a plan and a goal for your Facebook. You should really, and, I, and some of you have seen my seminars before, have seen this slide before, but it, it bears repeating that if, if you're not out there sharing information on Facebook, by, I, I guarantee you your competitors will be. And if you don't believe me, it's very easy. There's a search bar right in Facebook you can actually search for your competitors. You could search for things related to your industry, and I guarantee you, you will find competitive companies on Facebook that are targeting your customers. So it's imperative that what you should want out of Facebook is to be that leader, that industry leader, so that people count on you instead of your competitors. And in order to do that, you have to have a plan and a goal. You can't just go in there with guns a-blazing, you know, sh shooting everything up, saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to be on Facebook. And you, you go out there and you, you get a great Facebook page, right? And you, you, you're posting a bunch of content. And, and it's like, I, I've seen it so many times. People post stuff, and you look at their page and you think, uh, they don't get it. They, they're really not getting it. And, and then you see, little by little, your, your fans are un- liking your page. So really what is it about? It's about brand building and interaction. It's about you know it's it's about interacting with people so that when they do decide to buy your goods or service, whether you're an insurance company, whether you're in B2B, whether you're a, a retail organization, it, it it doesn't matter. Every product and every service has a a sales cycle. It, 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 it's a common practice in business. You have a sales cycle where at some point someone's going to need your goods or services or you wouldn't be in business. Right? So what you have to look at is how do I keep that brand building up, keep that top of mind awareness. We talk about that a lot, top of mind awareness, top of mind awareness. There's all these marketing buzzwords that we throw around. And, and what top of mind awareness is is, look, I want to make sure that when you are ready to buy the goods and services that I have provide uh, that I provide that I'm the one you think of. Right? It's about increasing the equity of your brand. Because let's be honest folks, if you're not increasing the equity of your brand, who's going to? And if you're not increasing the equity of your brand, guess what? Your competitors are going to be increasing the equity of their brand and you move lower and lower and lower on the chain. Okay? So we talk about when, when we look at the Internet as a whole, everybody, you know, it, it used to be all you had to have was a web page. Then you had to have a web page that was optimized. Now you have to have social media. You know, it, it, it's really about understanding what does your Internet footprint look like? Where are you at? So we're going to go through real quick. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this section because this is really a repeat of those, for those of you that have been to our, uh, our other social media seminars. 
These are some statistics that you've probably seen before, but for those of you that haven't been through any of our social media platforms, uh, social media webinars or seminars, uh, I do want to share a little bit of information about just the sheer volume of statistics of what Facebook has. So when you look at Facebook, there's, there's over a billion active users. It's actually about 1.1 to 1.2 billion now. And 20% and of those people have purchased something that they saw on Facebook. Okay, so, and a lot of times people say, well, Dan, 20% isn't a very impressive number, but you know what, 20% of a billion, that's a lot of people. And, you know, at any given moment in time, there half the people of Facebook, so, so half a billion people are on at any given moment. And, and with the advent of smartphones, I mean, here's, here's some interesting information regarding smartphones. 50% of people that have a smartphone are on Facebook all the time. And they're twice as active as they are as, as a regular user that's using it via a computer. So, you know, I, and, and I'm a perfect example of that. I, I hardly ever check Facebook on my computer because I, I just don't have the time. So what do I do? I have it on my, I have it on my iPhone and, you know, when I'm eating lunch, I'll check my Facebook page. When I'm, uh, you know, heading out to the car to leave for work, uh, to leave to go home at the end of the day, I might check my Facebook page before I, you know, take off to, to, to head to, to the house. Um, so you see a lot more use out of people that are uh, kind of mobile friendly. And, and really, I mean, it is everywhere. I mean, when you see Facebook, I, it, just this morning, it, it's sort of funny, I was thinking I, of, of examples of where Facebook has just permeated our, our, our um, society. And I was driving on Route 30 in the highway in, you know, near Lancaster, for those of you that are not familiar with the area, and I'm stuck behind this big truck. And you know, you know these big trucks that just, you know, they're, they're on the highway, they're not quite sure which highway they're supposed to be on, they cut off, they cut you off, and, and inevitably it's always that guy that cuts you off that has a big sticker on the back that says, how's my driving, <laughs> right? And, you know, call 1-800, we really don't care, because nobody ever picks up that phone number, and they're asking you how my driving is. And, and I thought it was kind of funny. This guy cu cuts me off this morning. It was a trucking company. And right below the um, How's My Driving sticker was this big Facebook icon, and it said, Follow us on Facebook. And I thought to myself, He can't even follow me on the highway. I don't want to follow him on the highway, and I certainly don't want to follow him on Facebook. So it, it, it really is everywhere. I mean, it, um, a couple months ago, an example I've used before is I was eating a deli sandwich uh, from a local deli, uh, sitting down eating lunch at my desk, and, and the sandwich paper, the paper that my sandwich was wrapped in, had Facebook icons all over it, and it was for boar's head meat, and they wanted you to connect with them on Facebook. So even my lunch meat has a Facebook page. You know, it, it's, it's far beyond your baloney having a first name anymore. I mean, you know, your, your lunch meat has a Facebook page. So for those of you that are listening, uh, that's as good as my humor gets. So you'll have to stick with uh, that. That'll, that'll, that'll be as good as it gets right there. Um, so, you know, why do people use Facebook? Obviously, clearly for personal purposes, it's a lot of different things that, you know, people use it for current events, keeping in touch with friends, playing games, and, you know, the, the infamous world of Candy Crush. Um, I, I personally don't do any of the gaming, but I know a lot of people who do. Um, but it's, it's this last one here that, um, that I really think that people you know, kind of miss out on. There, there are a lot of people that connect with special interest groups, and it's a great way to connect with people that you wouldn't normally uh, get a chance and opportunity to connect to. Um, and, and here's what a typical page looks like. We're going to switch live now to uh, actually a, um, a, a Facebook page here. Um, if I can get the right screen to pop up here, we'll be all set. There we go. All right. So, Here's a Facebook page of one of our clients. This is Sam Smucker and Sons here in, uh, uh, just outside of Lancaster, actually in Strasburg. Um, and they are a, a company that does roofing, siding, windows, downspouts, that sort of thing. So they're a home improvement company. Uh, and, and the picture, as you see, is their main location in Strasburg. They also have a, a, a location in Ephrata. Um, 
these guys do an excellent, excellent job with Facebook. And, and we have taken over their Facebook campaign. We do promotions for them. So we're going to talk to you a little bit about how to do a promotion within Facebook. And, and you can see here, there's their promotion there. It's a What's Behind the Door contest uh, where they're giving away an entrance door, uh, a home entrance door. So um, they're doing a lot of really, really cool stuff on Facebook. And there's so much that they – have engaged in that you could see a really, really big return on investment for them when it comes to their Facebook page. So, and, and this is typical. You'll typically have a, what they call a cover photo where you could have some text. You could have maybe a link to your, you know, a uh, text to show your URL address, picture of your building or your logo. And then their Facebook um, profile picture is usually your logo. Okay? But some people will say, well, Dan, why don't I put a picture of my building there? And, and I'm going to show you why. When, you, when you're posting, the only thing people see is this little tiny icon. And you become recognized by that icon. You'd be surprised at how many people will recognize you and your posts by your profile picture or your icon. So you really want to make sure that if you're going to have an icon as a business, that it's not so small that people don't know who you are. Um, and, and it is somewhat recognizable. And again, it's all about branding. When you look at their website, you see their website looks just like this um, and, and is branded just like uh, their Facebook page. And I'm going to bring up here – let's bring up their website here for you. Here's their, here's their website. So you see same color, same logo, information about what they do and how they do it same color scheme. So when you go to their Facebook page, same colors, same logo, same information. And you'd be amazed, and I know this sounds like a really small thing, but you'd be amazed at how many business profiles we look at where their, their Facebook page looks completely different than their website, and people have no idea who they are or if they're going to the right page. So little details like that that we look at and we say, um, so we, so we could say, okay, here's what, um, you know, here's what the uh, the page has. Uh, I'm I'm looking at a chat uh, question here from uh, Thomas. He said, "Where is the link to our competitors?" I guess I'm not understanding your question, uh, Thomas. Um, in in terms of what, uh, when you look at when you're looking at links for your competitors, what do you what what kind of information are you are you looking for where where are you linking we we typically don't link out to people's competitors on their facebook page so i'm not exactly sure what that question is for so tom if you could give me a little bit more clarity on that uh, i could try to answer that question for you we'll get back to that in just a minute so you could see here's a, a you know a typical example now good content a lot of people ask me dan what do I post on Facebook? What is the most important thing that I should post? Now, and, and, and we get varying answers. Are videos the most important? Is text the most important? Is a link to your website the most important? The, the, the biggest, most followed thing of all of Facebook posts are photographs. It, the, those are what get the most attention. Those are what get the most click-throughs. Those are what get the most likes and comments, and, and people will see and like and, and like different things. So, um, and the great part about a business profile is when you log in as your administrator, you can see how many people saw your post, how many people it reached both organically and via paid uh, uh, a paid promotion. You could see how many people. Um, like your post or how many people commented about your post. So there's a lot of different things that you could do to look at your, uh, your information and find out how well those posts are doing. And from all the research we've done, it's pretty clear that pictures are the most liked content on Facebook followed, um, followed next by um, – followed next by uh, videos and then uh, and then links to the website, and then just written content. Um, and uh, Tom, what I meant in the in, earlier when you said link to your competitors, I I wouldn't say to link to your competitors. I'm saying if you don't it, if you don't become the leader in your area, if you don't become the leader in you know, by by reaching out and by talking to 
people via social media and via your website, your client, your competitors certainly will. Um, so I'm not saying you would want to link to your competitors. I'm saying you would want to, you know, make sure that if you look at, if you do a search for, and 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 I think what I what I mentioned earlier was, if you go in and and do a search for anything in. Um, in Facebook, there's a search bar here at the top. You could search for competitors. You could search for different products, and they'll even show you. You could do a web search for Facebook for a particular uh, particular uh, competitor, or you could just look for different things in your area. So there is a search bar there that you can go in and actually look for to find out what competitors are on Facebook and, and what their pages look like as well. And you could see who is the person there out there talking about your goods or services. So I, I, I think that's what I was trying to mention earlier in the presentation, and hopefully Thomas I didn't confuse you too much there. Um, but that's where you would want to look and see if you, if you have any uh, competitors out there. And it's important that you have content that's compelling, that's asking a question. Right now, uh, Smuckers is in the process of doing actually a, a, a contest where they're uh, asking a trivia, uh, trivia question related to, um, related to, your, uh, to their industry so that they're getting people to interact that way. Um, now, if you don't have a search bar on your page, um, you may not have the newest updated profile uh, look, um, and you can update that. If you don't, uh, there just about any form. I see Patty said that she doesn't have a search bar on her page. Um, let me take a look here in Google Chrome and see if maybe it's showing a different interface. Now, even on the old interface, um, I mean, here's Here's what uh, my personal Facebook profile looks like in, in uh, Facebook. There's, there's this search bar, and then as a business, you'll, you'll typically see this type of face bar, uh, uh, bo um, search bar. So depending on which layout you have, there's this layout where you could search for people, places, and things here, um, and the same thing with the business layout there. So uh, hopefully that that should be on every Facebook page. If not, you may have to scroll up further because a lot of times what will happen is on a business page, it will load like your insights. It will load a bunch of other stuff. When you first log in, it will look like this where you have um, all of this information, and you have to even scroll down below the admin panel just to get to your content. So sometimes that, that search bar will disappear. So, so good little tidbits of information there. Um, but I'll show you a few more uh, live pages that we work on uh, that get quite a bit of uh, traffic here. This is uh, Horizon Structures. They're a client that, uh, that does horse barns and gazebos and, and sheds and garages and all kinds of different things. These guys have over 3,000 likes. Um, and, and they have quite a few different people talking about them and, and liking their things. And, and, and oddly enough, one of the interesting parts is these, these guys actually sold some product right from their Facebook page, which I thought was really uh, very, very cool. Um, Patty said uh, in, the, in the chat window here, for those of you that aren't monitoring the chat window, she said she has a, a search bar on her personal page, but uh, on the page for her company, she does not have one. Now. Um, that I, you may have to upgrade your version of Facebook um, or, or actually um, use a different browser would be my first recommendation. If you're on Internet Explorer, I would try opening it on, on uh, Firefox or Chrome. Uh, I've, I don't ever use Internet Explorer because I just had so many issues with it over time, but I think that would be the, probably the, the, the a lot of times you'll see the layout change based on the on the um, on the browser that you're using. But but typically, if you're looking at your home page, you're at you're at your home page for your business, um, and you click home, it's going to take you uh, to your timeline. Um, if you're logged in, and then you go to your business page, 
And when you click on your business page, you're going to bring up your admin panel. It's going to show the name of the company up here. Now that is your search bar. So where it says Horizon Structures right here, it's not just the title of the page. That's actually your search bar. So you would go in there and you would erase this and you would look for people, places, or things. So you can search for all different kinds of stuff uh, right there in the search bar. So even though it just shows your name there, it, it, uh, that is actually your search bar. Okay. So again, getting back to this, this is um, – you know, we, we get a lot of questions about what people will like, what, who, how many people saw stuff, or how many people like things, and commenting, that sort of thing. And here's a perfect example. Here's a, here's a post that was posted on the 6th, and it, and it basically is just very engaging. It's just asking the question of, do you like our Mini Coop? It's perfect for, you know, and when I grew up, a Mini Coop was a, a, a small car with two seats. Um, but apparently now it's something you put chickens in. Um, so again, I told you my humor wasn't getting any, getting any better. Um, but here they show this mini coop, and they're asking, you know, do you like it? And there were 69 people liked their uh, their coop. Um, there, they had over 1,500 people that saw uh, organically saw that post, and they had 12 different comments or actually 15 different total comments on the page. Now interestingly enough, um, you, know, you have people writing in comments ab about it. You have um, you know, somebody said, I would need at least 10 of these for all my chickens. So we went in and said, okay, fine. If you need a bigger one, there's some larger coops, and there's a link to the larger coops. Um, you know, and there's another one, I would love it, but too small for me. I would have 30. It would never fit and linking to the larger coops on their page so that people can go to their website and, and purchase something larger. Same thing here. This is considered a pool house. Um, would you, and they ask, you know, would you use it for a pool or somewhere else? And you get a bunch of different uh, comments on that as well. So the, the concept behind what makes a great Facebook post is have it be engaging. And, and make sure that when you're posting something, that it's something that somebody's going to respond to. If you just say, hey, check this out, or hey, check out our website for free shipping, or whatever, if, if all you're doing is throwing a sales message out there, guess what, folks? You're going to lose people, and you're, it, it, it has to be engaging. You're never going to build your likes up, or, up above 60 or 70 people if you're not engaging, because here's the thing. Here's something that you want to know that's very important to understand, is if you have – let's go back to somebody that has a, a smaller Facebook account than Horizon. They have 3,000 likes. That's, kind of, that's, that's quite a lot. Uh, we'll go back to Smuckers here. Now, they have 272 likes. Now, if, if we post something on Facebook for them, it's not going to get to all 272 people. It might get to 200, it might get to 180, 150, what have you. But the more engaging that post is, the more thought-provoking that post is, the more, you, the more enticing it is for somebody to like it or comment about it or, or talk about it, the more likely that you're going to get that it's going to go out to more than 200 people, it's going to go out to thousands of people. And the way that happens is, let's say we send it out to 200 people, and five people comment, comment on it or like it, it's now going to show up on their timeline so that all of their friends see what they liked or what they commented on. So now you're not only accessing the people that are, are liking your page, but anybody who commented, you're, you're accessing their friends as well. And that's what they call going viral. So, so if a post goes viral, by having other people that aren't normally associated with your brand or product that are seeing your posts, that are seeing your likes, that are seeing what people are out there talking about your business. So again, very important that we, we talk about this. And I know some of you that have been through our Facebook seminars before, you're probably thinking, God, gosh, Dan, you know, try to say something unique that you haven't said already. Well, I, I, I want to make sure that we're clear here that we, you, you want to have engaging content. And, and the only way to do that is to, to really think through what's going to attract people's attention. 
please, 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 you know, it's cute that people love pictures of cats doing silly things and things that make people laugh. And, and it's important to be social on social media because if you take the social out of it, it's just media. But you can't use social media as a platform to just share pictures of goofy cats. If you want this to be utilized to grow your business, you have to do the right things, and that involves – finding out what people are most passionate about when it comes to your goods or services. You know, if it's if let's say you're a flooring company, um, you know, I, I had a guy said, Dan, I, I we sell flooring, you know, how exciting is that? I said, Well actually it's very exciting. Show beautiful pictures of before and after pictures. Talk about how to seal your grout and your tile. Talk about how to maintain your hardwood floors over time. You know, I have a house with a ton of hardwood floors. I would love, you know, to, a resource that I could go to to find out information about hardwood floors. So it's imperative that you, you think about the content that you're posting. And then once you do, put, and, and you'll see it, you'll see the proof, in the, the proof will be in the pudding, folks. It, if you put time into engaging content, you will see these numbers go up. You will see how many people saw the post. You will see that when people comment on a post, and, and actually we will go back to Horizons here for just a minute because they have a ton of they get a ton of comments on their on their product. You know, when when they're posting something, and it gets okay. 1,300 people saw this post. Of the 20, or the 3,200 people that they have as fans, 29 people liked it. Okay, so, and only one person commented on it. Out of 3,200 people, those statistics aren't really huge, because really it was a, kind of more of a social thing. It was a generic post. It wasn't really anything related to their brand or their product. And you still want those from time to time. But you can see here, here's one that we talked about before the, with, the, with the Coop, where 69 people liked it. They got a bunch of people that talked about it. There were links back to the website. 1,500 people saw it. There was a ton of comments. So you really get out there to more people. The more people that are, uh, the more the people comment, the more people are seeing it. So. Um, you can you can look at some of that information as well, and then here you have one um, when you do you agree with this statement an overhang or lean to is number one on every horse owner's wish list when planning their barn so the, so twelve different people commented on it seventy six people liked it, and you could see out of the post. There were 700 people that got reached, and then there was 1,000 people that were reached via a paid, uh, a paid promotion. We'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Um, and then you can also look at each post within your insights to see how many people came to your post organically and how many people came to your post as a result of your post going viral. And we'll, we'll, we'll get into that here in just a minute as well. So the the information that you put there is vitally important. The other thing that's important to your page is making sure that it's not only set up and it looks good and it's branded like your page, but that you have the opportunity to share your sales message more than just on your timeline. Okay? There's only so much information you can put here. There's only so much information you can put here in your profile picture and your cover photo. So you say to yourself, hey, how do I get people, how do, how do I give them an, a, a flat out sales message about my product? Well, the way you do that is with your custom tabs. You could set up up to 12 custom tabs on your page and have it link to, you can either have it be a contest, a welcome page. This one links to their fan page where people can go and look at different products, click if they like it, read through it, fill out a form for more information, get added to their mailing list, what have you. Now, beyond their welcome page, let's go back to their timeline here. There we go you have all these other product categories. Now, if I click on sheds, it will take them to a page about sheds. And if I want to look at a particular type of shed, what is it going to do? It's going to take me right to their website, right to that particular product. So it's going to, geo it's going to target people down and drill down to 
what is it that people are interested in, and take them to that exact page on my website. So again, a very, very good way of driving traffic to your site. So these custom tabs are, are, are an excellent way to, you could share different, you know, clearly when, you're, when you set up a business page, typically what you'll see is your photos, your likes, a map to your business, and that's about it. Total, you know, and and they'll, so there'll only be like three, maybe four of these populated. But you could add a category for each of your different products. You could add contests, giveaways, welcome pages, whatever you'd like, and and add more content for people to find you and get to your products. Uh, great, great way to do that. And and again, it's real simple. I mean, all you do is you click on this little add button, and you can. Uh, you can add a contest, you can add apps, you can add videos, you could add notes, you could add a link to a website. Um, and it's very easy to do. You could even look in the, um, in the help section, actually gives you a, a really great tutorial on how to set these custom tabs up so that you can even link them. To, you could just have them be a straight link. Now right now these guys have landing pages which then link to product categories. But if you want, Let's say you have, um, you know, you have a product category here uh, in one of your custom tabs. You could set it up so that the minute somebody clicks on that link, it, it automatically takes you to your page. Um, so again, it's, it's driving traffic to your website. The great part about driving the traffic, a lot of people ask me, Dan, why would I want to take people away from my Facebook page and take them to my website? Well, the reason why is your website still the core of your internet footprint. And you want people to get to your website because at your website is where you have a captive audience. Okay? If they're on Facebook, they're going to get pulled away by somebody sending them a comment or, a com or, or, or some information. So you just want to make sure that, um, that, it's, that you're taking them to your page if, if you can or whenever possible so that you're keeping them uh, you're keeping them on your page. So now we're going to get into a, a little bit of, of how we look at the insights and how we do promoting of the posts. So it, you've written posts, you're getting engaging content, you're getting people to, to like them, you're getting people to comment, you're starting to see your numbers grow up, go, gr grow upward. Now it's how do I take it even further? Now, one of the biggest things you could do is you can promote a post. So if I'm in my Facebook page, and I'm not going to go in these guys' page. Let me, uh, let me switch pages here. And um, if I'm on somebody's page, or if you're on your business page, and you want to take a, promote, a, a, a post and you want to promote it, let's say they, they've opened, they have this, this is the, the picture of their showroom in Ephrata, uh, and they want to promote their showroom in Ephrata, you can go in and boost a post. Okay? You could see what – you could target specific cities. You could target specific friends. You could target age demographics. You could target a particular gender. And you can put in a budget of how many people you're going to want to reach. And you can say, okay, you know, hey, my budget's only 20 bucks. Right? If my budget's only 20 bucks, you're going to reach about 2,400 to 4,500 4, of the 170,000 people in your area. If you put in five bucks, you're going to reach about a thousand people. Okay. Now you can choose what towns you want. You can erase what towns you don't want. You could get very specific as to how many people or who you want to reach and where you want to reach. You could put in a, a, a payment so that when you run a promotion, you don't have to keep giving them your credit card number. You can put in a, a, a reusable payment term, and you can make the length of the promotion stand for uh, any given amount of time. You can boost the promotion for a day, for a week, whatever you'd like to do. So, so there's a lot of things that you could do to promote your posts. You could also promote your company. So if you go to your home page, you can promote your company as a whole through Facebook by hitting this Promote Your Page section. Okay? When you hit your Promote Your Page, again, same thing is I, I want to be in the United States. I want to be in the Lancaster, Reading area. I want to be known for do-it-yourself general contractor home improvement stuff. And my daily budget is 
you know, so many dollars. So you are going to get an estimated number of likes per day based on the amount of money you are willing to spend to promote your page. Okay? And that is going to show up on people's timelines that are interested in general contractors, home improvement, or do-it-yourself. Okay? So, and they are going to show up on people's timelines that are from Lancaster and they are from the Reading, Pennsylvania area. So great way to improve your business profile is again, promote your page, promote your posts. Okay? Now, we've talked about how to set up a good page. We've talked about how to post. We've talked about how to promote. Now we want to start talking about, okay, how do I measure whether this is working or not? I'm putting dollars towards promoting the post. I'm putting dollars towards promoting my page. I'm putting dollars towards you, you can even do, and here's another one, you can, you can put an ad on the side. You could promote your page via a paid ad. Same thing. So you could, there's all different types of ways to promote through Facebook. So you can promote on people's timelines. You can promote on the sidebar as a paid ad. You can promote your post itself. Okay. Now we say, Dan, I've done all that. Thanks for helping me out. I, I did a couple of promotions. I'm, 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 promote, I'm, I'm posting better content. How do I know if this is working? So here's the real power in this that I, that I love looking at is when I look at how many people did I reach, how many people did I engage, how many people liked my post, you can look at all of that information within Google Insights or uh, Facebook Insights. And I'll show you how to get to that just in case anybody missed that. If you're on your home page, And this is not loading for some reason. There we go. Sorry about that. If you're on your home page and you go to your business page, okay, we're going to use Smuckers as a, an example here, it's going to bring up your admin panel. It's going to show your different posts, how many people it reached, whether it was a paid post, if it reached you know, people from the paid perspective. Um, it's going to give you messages and, and friends and all kinds of stuff and get more likes. And it, it, it's going to try to get you to promote your page. But the section right here in the middle, it's going to talk about how many people saw your post from the previous week, and it says Insights See All, or Check Out the New Page Insights. So if you click on the Check Out the New Page Insights, it's going to bring you to this area that's going to give you all kinds of analytical data and statistics on how to, um, how to really reach p different people. So I see Jeannie uh, asked me, do you think boosting a post or promoting your company is really helpful to your business? And the answer to that question is yes. Uh, I, I think the, the biggest thing to keep in mind when you're looking at promoting uh, on Facebook is what is your market saturation? Okay? If you're Coke or Pepsi do you, you know, and, and you have a, mar a huge market saturation, or if you're you know, uh, Google and you have a 90% market share, you know, it, is it really imperative that you're promoting and reaching out and trying to get new people? Uh, yes and no. I, I still think it's important. But, but the question is, if you're not, or, or I guess the answer to the question is, if there's still clients left out there that you haven't reached out to, or there's still, if your market saturation is small, and, and most businesses I come across that it is, um, then yeah, you should be out there promoting your company. Because you're, you don't know, I mean, if, if you look at your total customer records, and you know, I talked to a guy the other day. I said, so how many total customers do you think you've had over the last 10 years? He said, I don't know, 3,000, 4,000 customers in the last couple of years. I said, you have 100 fans on Facebook. And there's 100,000 people in, in the town that you're in. I, you know, do you really think that you're saturated in the market yet? Do you really think that everybody that should know about you knows about you? So yeah, any, I, I think just about any business, there's very few businesses that I would say that uh, would not benefit from, uh, from promoting posts on their, on their uh, page. Um, Cindy asked is that if this is being recorded, um, if, if you'll be able to watch the webinar again, the answer to the question is yes. I did hit the record button this time, unlike some of my previous ones. So yes, it is re being recorded, and we will put it up on the website for you to be able to look at uh, at, a, at a later time, especially for those that have to cut out uh, early or, or didn't get here on time for the, the start of this webinar. So yes, Cindy, it will be uh, recorded. 
So getting back to these uh, statistical information and the analytics or the insights as, as Facebook calls it for your page, you'll be able to look at all different types of information from page likes to post reach to uh, overviews, um, look at one of your more, all of your recent posts. And here's some things that I'll show you is, you know, you can look at any given snapshot of time. They, they typically give you a 30-day window of how your, if your posts reach different people, how many people liked and commented and shared. Now you can do this for up to, two, up to three months. So if we back it all the way up to um, July 14th here, it's going to show me the last 90 days worth of data uh, for both organic and paid post reaching in, uh, within Facebook. Uh, it's going to show you how many people uh, got, how many people re it reached, um, how many people liked, shared, or commented. So a lot of great, great information. Some information that I, I love looking at as well is, is um, how many people visited different tabs on your page. You could see if those custom tabs are working for you. You could see if those um, – you could see what information is being looked at by others, how many people are looking at your overall timeline, and then uh, how many other page activity people checked in or mentioned you or did anything else uh, besides just your page. Then you can look at, okay, how many people like my page, and, and over time, uh, how is I uh, doing as far as getting total number of likes? And you'll see some people, if they post too much salesy content, their likes will go down. Uh, you should hopefully see a good trend upward. Now, these guys engaged us and said, hey, uh, easy solution. We want to do a, pr a Facebook contest and promotion to increase the number of likes on our, on our site. So when we engaged them, uh, back in, actually, I think it was uh, May, they had about 75 to 100 people that liked their Facebook page. And they were moving right along, a couple here, a couple there, one or two here, or there, here, or there. And we said, okay, let, we're going to do a big promotion to try to boost your, the number of people that like you on Facebook locally. Now, we're not interested in getting likes from fake dummy accounts that don't exist. I'm not interested in getting people to like my page that are outside my core demographic. I'm looking to bring legitimate likes and legitimate traffic to your Facebook page for people that are genuinely interested. So we do a lot of promoting, and you can see this number start to climb dramatically. And this, this new campaign that they've been doing has really been uh, very, very successful for them. Um, you could see the number of organic likes. You could see the number of likes that were a result of a paid advertisement. So you could see if the paid advertising that you're doing, if you're promoting a post, it will actually show you, hey, I promoted this post. Did it result in any likes to my page? Or were the likes organic likes? So you could see how many people liked your page, how many people unliked your page. Okay? And, and clearly the more you're promoting, the more people are going to say, eh, I don't like I don't like this. You, you will lose one or two off the backside. But as you can see, net change is still getting quite a bit of uh, net new likes to their Facebook page. So uh, you can see how many people are looking at your product from a mobile device. You can see all kinds of great, great, great information here to track the return on your investment, to track to make sure that uh, where your information is coming from. And you'll learn a lot about the people that are your fans. Uh, it will show you how many people uh, are male versus female, what age demographic, what city they're from, where they're from. So you can see, okay, of, of the people that like their page, there's really not um, – you know, you might have onesie twosies from, from areas outside your target area, but you see all of their fans are local in their target market fans. And you can see there's one person from Paraguay and one person from India uh, because you can't really control who does or doesn't like your page. But the reality is you, you want to make sure that these numbers are reflective of legitimate people in your target market. So you look at the different uh, age demographics and you say, okay, wow, I didn't realize that one of my largest core demographics 
is women between the ages of 55 and 64. And for them, that's, that's got to be a huge eye-opener. So you can look at all kinds of different things. You can look at of the people you reached, what's their age demographic? What's their gender breakdown? Um, and what people you engage, same thing. So, so clearly learning a lot about your uh, target audience. Um, and then here you'll see when your clients are online the most. This is, this is also imperative if you're trying to figure out – a lot of times people will ask me, Dan, when's the best time of day to post? Well, I'm no brain surgeon, so I'm not going to be able to just you know, automatically know when your people are online. Facebook is going to tell you. You go to when your fans are online, and it's going to show you, hey, uh, the peak time that my fans are online are at 8 p.m. At 8 p.m., I have an average of 114 people online. And then you know, clearly people are sleeping here at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, but uh, your peak time is that, that prime time area. So a lot of times people, when you put out posts, you can actually put your posts out a month in advance and just uh, schedule them out so that they get scheduled. Uh, and it's pretty easy to do that as well. All you have to do is it, you can put in a Google window or look at the help section to find out how do you uh, schedule out a post. Uh, or you can contact me, email me. I'll be happy to share that information with you as well. So um, there is a way that you can schedule out your posts. You can write them in the morning and have them hit at 8 o'clock at night if you want. Um, so there's, there's a lot of great things you can do as a business account that you wouldn't normally be able to do as a personal account to maximize the effectiveness of that. So uh, again, I can, uh, I can show you the specifics on that um, uh, if you'd like, or uh, you know, shoot me an email and I'll, I'll, I'll shoot it over to you. Uh, really, or all you really need to do is go to, your, go to the Help Center and, and type in Schedule a Post, and it'll show you how to schedule your posts. It's really not that, that difficult. So, and, and the cool part about this too is, the, the cool part about this ROI is, a lot of times people come to us and they'll say, Dan, we want you to manage our, our, our Facebook campaign, and we want you guys to provide us with reports. Well, believe it or not, you can actually take all of this data and you can export it and look at all of this different information and actually download it to a PDF file and use it to, to show reports to your staff, to show reports to the management team, what have you, as to how effective your social media is for you. So there's really a ton, a ton, a ton of information beyond just posting on Facebook, beyond just uh, you know, blurting out to the world about your what sale you have going on this week, uh, or what have you. So, um, you know, you definitely want to make sure that you're uh, out there talking and, and engaging and responding and and looking at things. So, getting back to our presentation here, I'm going to wrap this up here. Um, clearly you see the marketing benefits is you know you can promote your brand, you can keep in touch, you establish a community of people, and, and a lot of these other things that we've talked about is being that expert and a leader in your industry. Um, and you can offer discounts and promos, you can build your email list, you can sell through Facebook. There's really so many, so many marketing benefits that you can utilize through Facebook. And you, we tell people all the time, one of the, one of the last things I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with here is, is really, you know, don't add a Facebook icon to your website until you've considered what is your plan, what is your goals, what do you want to accomplish with the page, what are you going to sound like. And I know those of you that have heard my social media seminars before, you've heard me say this before, but I will keep drilling it at people until they get it. You know, don't just stick a Facebook icon on your website and, and, and come up with a Facebook page if you don't have any anticipation of being committed to it. You know, think of, come up with a plan and think about what are you going to sound like? What is your, what is your voice going to be? Who do you want to be known as in your industry online? What will you share with people? And who are you going to target? Who are your target fans? And then last but not least, make sure you're engaging – because if all you're doing is blurting out a sales message, that's not engaging. Okay? And listen. Listen to what people say. Listen to what people comment, and make sure you comment back. If you don't comment back, they're not gonna, they're, they're, you're going to lose them. Okay? 
So engage and listen. Now, here's an example of a, a, a client. We built their website. They asked us to build them a Facebook page, and you can see the difference. You know, their Facebook page their, and their website look very similar. Again, branding. Uh, we talked about what makes a good fan page, so we'll, we'll, we'll kind of skip through this real quick here. Um, custom welcome pages, uh, we already did that as well, so I'll, uh, I'll skip ahead here in the presentation. And I, I think probably the most important thing that I can tell you uh, that I think in terms of social media is don't try to sell all the time. You know, the the more you're salesy, the, the the more obnoxious it becomes to people, and then you wind up losing people. So, in summary, you know, really, the, and this goes back to our our social media seminars from before. If you don't have a fan page, get one. If you don't know what you're doing, ask, search, look, but come up with a plan. Come up with how do I engage people? If that's the biggest thing I can I could get you guys to think about is how do I engage people so that they s respond, that they share, that they talk, that they, even if you have to be a little bit controversial at times, at least get people to talk and talk back, right? Or are you just posting? Okay, uh, if if you're just posting, you're wasting your time, and you're wasting your customers' time, and eventually people are going to unlike you because there's really you're not bringing anything to the table. Okay, so a lot of times, I mean, here's the million dollar question. We ask this in every one of our seminars, every one of our webinars. You know, it, if you were, go, it, it, what would it take for you to have a great Facebook page or a great Twitter page or YouTube page or whatever? But, but we're talking about Facebook here today. What would it take for you to have a highly qualified social media expert on your payroll? Okay, is this something that you have time to do? Most small business and medium business owners don't have the time to manage these things. So the question is, how much would it cost you? Is it 40 a year? Is it 60 a year? How qualified do you want somebody to be? Do you know that the person is going to be able to look through your insights and tell you what kind of return on investment you got? Okay. We are here to help you if you, if, if you don't have somebody that you could rely on or you just don't want to do it yourself, we can help you. We're going to help, we can help you manage the campaign. We can help you set it all up for you. Keep on top of, you know, one of the things we do is we keep on top of what are the rules and regulations? What are the newest uh, regulations that Facebook puts out for people? We're going to send you reports. We're, we're going to make sure that you know, anytime Facebook changes the way they do business, that we change accordingly so that we're on top of things. And then we actually will take the time to invest in your campaign for you. We will invest the time. We will take care of it for you. And, and quite honestly, you know, we have the know-how to do it. We've been doing this a long time. We, we're up to speed on all the current newest things in Facebook. Uh, our, our social media manager, Sue, is, is really just right on top of stuff. And we do have packages that start out at about 12 bucks a day for Facebook. And it's really pretty simple. You know, if you want to do a Facebook page, it's $850 to set up the Facebook page. It's, and then you choose how often you want to reach out. Do you want to reach out every other day? Do you want to reach out every day? If you want to reach out every other day, it's $350 a month. If you want us to write a compelling post every day, it's $600 a month. We could do things as, as far as uh, consulting. We could do training. We could do promotions for you. We just did a promotion for a veterinary clinic. Uh, that uh, a cardio, car, Chesapeake Valley Cardiology something or something. It's a, it's a veterinary cardiology uh, company that does uh, veterinary cardiology. And I always mess up their name, so I apologize if there's anybody on the call from CVCA. But, um, but you know, we just did a great promotion for them at launch today. Uh, and it's a, a calendar contest. So you know, there's a lot of things that we can, we can do for you. Um, we can even do promotions. We can help you do the promotions or do the promotions for you and promote through Facebook and do your ad campaign there as well. Um, and I'll even share you what this is. Here's the, um, the one we just launched today for um, CVCA, and they're doing a photo contest for uh, for pets, for the, they're doing a, they do an annual calendar, and people can submit their ads, their pictures. So this is the header graphic that they're using on the page. 
Uh, we created a, a, a Like Us banner uh, for their website, um, small post ad, app icon. So we'll actually, we even have the capabilities of going in for a client and, and setting up a contest and a promotion and having different graphics that brand back to their company or brand to their post or, or their promotion. So there's a lot that you could do there. If you'd like our help, we'd love to help you. Um, check out our website at easysolution.com. You can click on the social media section and fill out the form. And myself or one of our other social media experts will actually contact you. Um, you could sign up for Facebook immediately if you'd like. You can reach out to me. My uh, email is dmeyer, that's D-M-E-Y-E-R, at easysolution.com. And uh, we'd be more than happy to help you out. So um, with that in mind, uh, my presentation is over here. So I will go ahead and open it up to questions. If anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to either put a question up on the chat, uh, chat bar, or if you're on the phone call, uh, go ahead and ask a question, and we'll be happy to uh, try to answer it for you. All right, I don't see any uh, – nobody's stepping up with any questions, so hopefully I answered everything for you. I didn't put you guys to sleep. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me. Like I said, it's dmeyer at easysolution.com, or you could go to our website at easysolution.com and click on the social media icon. And uh, if you have any questions from there, somebody will contact you. And this webinar will actually be posted on our website, and you will get a link to it as a sign-up. Uh, as somebody that signed up for this webinar, you will get a link to the, uh, to the webinar emailed to you so that you can see the, the video of it. So thank you so much everyone. I appreciate everybody's time. Uh, hopefully everybody got something out of this. Uh, you will probably receive also a feedback notice. Um, you'll get a, a, some feedback uh, being asked to you know, tell uh, what you thought of it. So uh, looking forward to uh, hearing from some of you folks. And uh, if I don't hear from you, have a great day. Thanks and take care.